So I'm getting uh, some more um, depth of vision on this scene of um, the comparison between uh, Nietzsche and Heidegger. Uh, so far as I can see now uh, more clearly that Heidegger is much closer to um, the now um, uh, know-how of the um, prevalent view of the um, something like a fact-value distinction um, in anything like a strict sense. Um, just a quick caveat, the word fact in ordinary usage like all other words is a little more freewheeling than the um, fact-value distinction in Simmel's sense, where fact would mean something that properly should be um, established by some a scientist of some stripe. Um, so it would exclude, uh, it, it, it would lead to this these kind of claims that there's um, uh, the plural of um, uh, anecdote, um, is not data or um, something along those lines. It does, the, what the, the ordinary person isn't really competent to produce facts properly on that distinction. We're always um, mixed up in the, the good, the true, and the beautiful, and the, um, the ideas are swelting our, around in whatever we would say, even if we're talking about a bench or a certain kind of tree or whatnot. Um, Heidegger is closer to the current settlement and then and uh, also to in some way this is why when we look at things that are supposedly um, very antipathetic to Heidegger like the um, logical positives or so positivists or so um, we actually gain a lot of ground to see the exact point where Heidegger um, breaks against that view, but he keeps close to it, uh, at least on the level of his metaphysical um, presentation, which he, and he does give a metaphysical presentation, I would insist, because that's in a certain, even though he's thinking um, uh, with steadfast resolution, as it were, he's thinking as though it might be possible, sort of in an attitude of hope, of Christian hope almost. Um, but he calls it the steadfast resolution towards this possibility of um, gaining back the, the originary ground. Um, but this means that he's always standing with the, um, uh, on the one side, the realm, which would correspond more to the, remember the fact value distinction is post Nietzschean, so it's simul is largely uh, credited with it in its strict sense. Um, of course, I'm quite aware that people like Hume would pose something similar and that does have a connection through Kant, uh, through Schopenhauer to Nietzsche and, and to Simmel. But um, its distinctive formation, which is most prevalent, is due to Nietzsche and must in control of the universities and of daily life. Um, so there the fact would be more like an environmental um, zu Handenheit uh, feature. So that's the, um, the so-called da the there, fort da, fort da, there gone, Freudian uh, game of children uh, is, I suppose, included in the Heideggerian view where the nicht, uh, nicht, nicht, uh, where the nothing nothings. But uh, that just as an aside. So yeah, one side, the um, environmental, the fact, the um, uh, Überhaupt, the phenomena in Kant, um, uh, nature, what comes forward by itself, um, the, the environment of the animal, the human being as an animal. On the other side, um, this uh, open field of the good and truth, uh, Nietzsche mostly speaks uh, in contrast between the phenomena in the old uh, Greek sense, which may or may not be identical to the sense Husserl revived. Uh, Heidegger claims that it is. Um, with some minor complicate with some complications because we don't know if we can actually reach the Greeks, um, and then so on the other yeah so the, on the the side of the forehand in height of the presence to hand this is the metaphysics of the Greeks this is um, the high ideas the good the uh, true the beautiful um, 
Agathon, uh, Aletheia, and um, um, other ideas, DK, and uh, uh, so forth. All this is in uh, presence, and it's connected up with um, history for Heidegger. I think for Heidegger, in a way, the largest um, twofold uh, is on the one side um, history, and on the other side uh, nature. But nature means for him, I think, um, the German physics as it had reached um, the state it had reached in his time and ongoing, but with the decisive uh, notion of the um, something like a car half Cartesian settlement where number uh, plays a large role in, I think according to Heidegger, number is this special case of um, uh, actual human future coming into physics because number is something that's not really in the environment. It's added uh, by the human, although there's people argue about that with sabotaging and this kind of uh, arguments. But um, basically, we have those uh, two distinctions solidly, whereas in Heidegger and in the prevalent uh, settlement, the fact value settlement, uh, because Heidegger has the DAW on the one side and the sign on the other, sign going with metaphysics and history or world. Um, world meaning what city are you in and what do you do? Uh, what do you do for a living? Um, though, so there's uh, both of those sides are still there. Whereas in Nietzsche, this is. Uh, probably part of the, the point where Heidegger is coming under attack from Nietzsche, where Heidegger's um, uh, wife is uh, cautioning him not to spend too much time reading Nietzsche because it depresses him. Um, in between, so Heidegger's accusation against Nietzsche is Nietzsche hasn't seen um, these realms as right and the right and left that we stand between, as it were, and where we um, somehow um, are as um, time, and as that um, ascends or goes back and forth, goes back and forth. Uh, the fog rolls in, rolls out. I think is one of Heidegger's uh, metaphors. Um, from those two regions, that's uh, where we uh, make our showing as uh, docile, not as um, an ego. Um, okay, so just to say, um, Heidegger is probably, in, in many ways, at least superficially, he keeps the skeleton of the metaphysics, which is actually the most powerful view for all of us these days, so far as we had a primary education in um, almost anywhere, I think, uh, because that's taken over in East Asia, in India and China, as much as here, that basic outlook. Um, within the extreme values becoming well, but I don't think you have to go to the extreme. Values are simply subjectivity because they can't be, there's no scientist that can come in and tell us this is real knowledge about values. Um, and everybody, almost everybody has uh, somehow an agreement with that um, claim. Then you have to change, uh, then you have to have people like Dugan who are um, Uh, disrupting that in some way, in some kind of staging, some kind of revolt against that in some way where they don't accept the, um, even though they too are part of it in a way because they sense the gravity of it and respond to it. Right? But uh, so just to say that and then to say that we have this other side, a lot of things Nietzsche is saying are um, in a way, uh, 
they're attacking Heidegger in one sense, but in another sense, Heidegger has claimed to, um, instead of attacking constantly like that, he's claiming to just look for the more radical break, even more radical than what Nietzsche has done by throwing um, the whole metaphysical picture into this uh, disordered, hazardous uh, chaos. But Heidegger is um, claiming to have seen more like the, um, the yawning gape, originary uh, chaos as a possibility to get really to the um, source of how this all um, come, came together uh, with the, this first ushering in of the fusis as a contradistinction to uh, nomos um, in the beginning of the, the Greek uh, thinking.